welcome back. If this is your first time, hi. If this is not your first time, hey. Listen, today I want to talk about using your mind because this week has been all about mind things, right? Mind your business, mind your life. So I want to talk about using your mind to get what you want because I think it's powerful. And I think you need to know this because just like I talked about the problem with intuition, there's a little bitty problem when it comes to manifestation that you may or may not be aware of. What's the problem? That you're not aligning what you think and what you feel. Well, well whoa, wait, somebody told me all I need to do is think about it or put it on a vision board or whatever. All I gotta do is think. And I'm like, mm, yeah. That's why we need to have this conversation because you've only been given half of the story. And I know because I was given half of the story myself. And so I guess if you're still here, great, because I already gave you the answer. But if you want to know a little bit more, let's hang out. Oh, before we get into this, make sure you drop a comment because we are giving away things. I don't know what the things are, but we're giving them away. And so everyone who leaves a comment, you'll be entered in a drawing either at the end of the week or the end of the month. I'll be updating that at some point, and you're going to win something pretty groovy. I love to give gifts. Those of you who know me personally, I love to give gifts. And those of you who are clients or have been in our programs, you know, I, I, I love to give you things that will help you. And so we have oodles of things. We've got books. We've got card decks. Yes, I have my own coaching deck that will ask you 52 questions, actually questions and actions. And so you can get that there. Listen, there are so many things in this office that I could send to you. And you know what? I'm not even opposed to going out and buying new things. One of the favorite things I did was we had, um, we had a program and I created these boxes, you know, kind of like the subscription boxes. And one of the women that enrolled was a travel agent. And so I got to curate a book for her. I had to get it from Amazon um, that was a travel journal and her box was the only box that had that. So when I say I love giving gifts, I'm not just on some you know, little cheapy, here you go. I want you to have an experience. So make sure you drop a comment below. Anyway, back to what I was saying. So thinking and feeling is key. And I honestly think this is where a lot of people drop the ball when it comes to manifesting, because that's, you know, the big word. When it comes to getting what you want, I think that's where a lot of people drop the ball because you're thinking it, but you're not feeling it. What? No, you're waiting until it comes in for you to feel it. And one of the things that I like to challenge my clients to do is to talk about how it feels. And I think people might call this scripting. I think this goes into the vein of scripting if you're looking for a term, but talk about how it feels or write down how it feels when it happens. Don't wait until it happens to feel it because that's the disconnect, right? If you're telling me that I'm thinking that it's time for me to be in a amazing romantic connection. Okay, well, how does it feel? Like drop into that, feel it. Like, I mean, is it peaceful? Is it loving? Is it kind? Does it excite you? Does it, does it turn you on? And, and, and feel that right now because that's laying the groundwork. Because you're saying with, with your decision to get vulnerable, what am I pointing at? What is kryptoniting behind me, which is my best-selling book about being vulnerable. When you get vulnerable enough to feel something, that shifts the energy of it. It's one thing to think, right? People think about stuff all the time. They think they want to do this. They think they want to do that. They think, 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 think. But there takes a certain level of vulnerability to feel it to allow yourself to drop into the feelings of something that you haven't even had yet. The feelings of something that you want, that takes courage, that takes bravery. Thinking mm, takes a little bit of bravery and courage, especially if you're, if you're thinking big things and you're, and you're outside of the box. And so I'm saying, go deeper, feel it. If you're telling me that you're going to be the, the number one YouTube creator on the planet, Okay, great. What does that feel like? Does it excite you? Does it frustrate you a little bit? Because you know, you've got all these people coming at you and pulling on you. Um, um, does, does it light you up? This is important. Your feelings are so important because your feelings can give you information that your thoughts never will. Your thoughts are very much about 
the control. The, uh, oftentimes they're about the pragmatic, but your feelings are now tapping into the energetic and the spiritual. And that's the part of you that actually makes things happen. For me, there has to be an alignment. It's head, heart, and hands, right? That's my thing. Hashtag Stephisms. That's my thing, right? Aligning your head, your heart, and your hands. And so if the head is the only thing that's working, and then you're 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 you know you're you if your head and your hands are the only thing that's working, your heart is not in the isn't not in the mix. And the heart is actually the space from which we actually manifest love and money love and abundance, romance and abundance, connection and abundance, relationship, vulnerability. The heart space is really powerful. And, and, and there are a lot of people, if you go back to the overthinking video, this is, this is also why overthinking can be so damning. It's because it keeps you in your head and not in your body, not in your feelings. Now, some people will say, you know, well, you know, get, Get, get out of your feelings. And I'm like, but sometimes you need to get into your feelings because your feelings are going to give you instructions and data that you cannot get from thinking all the time. See, we've got to think, feel, and do, okay? Think, feel, do, head, heart, hand. See, it, it all goes together, you know? And so I want to encourage you to feel. Like, so if, let's do a little exercise. Shall we, y'all wanna work together? Let's do a little exercise. So if I say to you, I am going to, in fact, I'm not, you know, I'm going to use affirmations for this one. So there is no, I am going. And when you do affirmations, they're always present tense and affirmative. I am living my best life now. Take that statement. I am living my best life now. Feel it. How does it feel? Now, if you're having trouble feeling it, that's a disconnect between your thoughts and your beliefs. You may be bound to beliefs. There's something I talk about called binding beliefs. And, and it sounds like limiting beliefs, but it's, it's situations that, that are binding you to beliefs that just aren't true. You may actually not believe that you can ever live your best life because maybe life hasn't shown you that. Or maybe when you believed it before, it didn't go the way that you wanted it to go. I understand that, but here's the thing that the inability to feel is telling you something. See, didn't I tell you your feelings are going to give you data that your thoughts never could? Ah, look, it just happened. I remember one time training some coaches and, and saying to them, hey, I want you to repeat after me. My program investment is $20,000. Watch me now. <laughs> Watch this. Okay, so before they could even get the statement, I saw faces like curl up and, and the face of fear came over. And I'm like, listen, one of the challenges of, of new people in business is that oftentimes they don't believe in themselves. I know that I didn't, and I was, I've been in business since I was nine. And I didn't believe in myself enough to, to require people to pay me my value. Nobody can pay you your worth. But I didn't have the, the, the courage to say those things. And, and, and if you can't say 20,000 without wincing, you probably can't say 15, 10, or five. I just start with 20 because I, I get you know, more responses that way. But the challenge is, is that oftentimes we start to think, wow, that's a lot of money. Wow, that, that's this. Wow, I couldn't afford myself. Wow. And so you start to overthink yourself right out of your sale. Because if your program is actually $20,000, because there are coaches who have $20,000 programs, there are coaches that have $100,000 programs. But whatever the, the, the cost, the investment for your program, if you can't say it without wincing, we got a problem. Home alone face. So I'm challenging them and I was trying to make them as uncomfortable as possible to say these things and they're wincing and grimacing and oh my God, oh my God. And so I'm like, listen, now the, the, the inability to connect to that feeling, to that feeling of, of courage, that feeling of confidence in that you are worthy of what you're asking for, that's telling us that we need to, to dig into those binding beliefs, what we are actually bound to what we've actually been taught about charging people money. Because honestly, some people have been given a money narrative that is totally antithetical to how they want to do business. You know, especially if, if someone maybe, maybe grew up struggling. Um, it may not be natural for them to say, 
you should pay me this month, this month, this month. Yes, pay me this month, but pay me this much because unfortunately, struggle has been normalized and struggle has been normalized in a variety of ways for many of us, you know, and it may not be socioeconomic. It just may be mentally or maybe emotionally. And so in that, though that lack of feelings is showing us things that the thoughts never can. So I've made my point. So the challenge is I want you to write, I want, I'm giving you an assignment today. This today is about an assignment. And if you're really brave, then I want you to either write the assignment in the comments. Okay. I'm going to give you the assignment in a minute or just say, I did it in the comments. Okay. Cause remember we're doing contesting. If you want to win, got to drop a comment. So I want you to write three affirmations, three affirmations. Okay. Remember affirmations are present tense and affirmative and affirming. Oh, well, affirmative is yeah, definitely affirmative. I am, I have, I do, I go, not I will, or I am going. It, there, there's no, there's no future tense on a, on an affirmation. Boom. I am. All right. Three affirmations. Then I want you to drop into what you feel about each one on the day that you write them. Okay. I'd like for you to come back Three days later, say the same affirmations and track how you feel about them three days later and then do seven days and then the end of the month, well, maybe 21 and then the end of the month. So three affirmations, what you feel right then, what you feel in three days, what you feel in seven days, what you feel in 21 days, and then what you feel at the end of the month. That is your assignment. And so if you're really brave, you can write the assignment just the first day, write your three affirmations in the comments and, you know, just, just say, Hey, let us in, let us into your thought process really. Um, but if you don't want to put your business out, because I think your affirmation should be big and bold. And what is, what do they call B hags? Big, hairy, audacious goals. It is not my concept. I can't remember the creator. If you know, put it in the comment. They're called B hags. I think your affirmations should celebrate BHAGs, okay? Big, hairy, audacious goals. So put them in the comments if you want to, or if not, just put, I did it. Anyway, I want to see you align your thoughts and your feelings because that is what's going to make you more powerful. That is gonna help you bring things in. That is gonna make you comfortable with living the life and building the life that you ultimately want, need, desire, and deserve. And that's all I have to say about that. Anyway, my name is Stephanie D. McKenzie. I'm a speaker, teacher, author, and coach here to remind you to always be your own superhero and to thank you guys so much for loving and learning and writing affirmations and living the life that you ultimately deserve with me. See you on the next video.